So for this uh, this session, I'm going to talk about a web comic that I like because I can't think of anything else to talk about. So the web comic in question is called Lackadaisy, and it is basically a comic that takes place in the 1920s, the Prohibition era, just before the Great Depression, in the 1920s, and it's about a you know gangsters. Prohibition gangsters with speakeasies and all that jazz. But the interesting thing about it is that it stars cats. Like anthropomorphic cats. Cats that stand on two feet and have hands. But they have uh, faces of cats. So that's basically what it is. It's a gangster cats. It's a really entertaining comic. Uh, it's one of the few comics that has actually made me laugh out loud. Now... I can laugh out loud at things when I'm with other people and there's a group because, you know, you kind of get the, the feeling to laugh. Like, it, it becomes easier to laugh if you're around someone who's laughing, right? But uh, when I'm alone, it's very hard to laugh at things, especially things that don't have audio. Audio usually gets me. Like, there are certain YouTube videos that I watch that just make me laugh like crazy. But for, th for some reason, this webcomic, in a few places, not not... Not that many places, but in a few places had made, has made me laugh. And that's a rare thing to do. And also, it's very, very well drawn. Like, I'm talking extremely well drawn. I'm talking like you can see every detail and they're perfectly shaded. And it's like pencil shaded. And it's so, so rich. And every single character has a different looking face. And I think a Tracy Butler, who is the author, she is an expert at the human face. Like, she's drawing cat faces in this, but she she's shown drawings that she'd done of human faces, and they all look different. It's very, very difficult. She can do the thing that I want to be able to do. I want to be able to draw human faces that look real, and that you can tell the difference between them, and you can tell who they are, because she can totally do that, and that is awesome. Also, like, the, her backgrounds are full full of details. Like... You know, in like a manga or a, or a comic book, most comic books and manga, the backgrounds are kind of like line work. Line work that's painted nicely. But not Tracy. <laughs> not Tracy. She, she draws backgrounds completely 100% detailed, like 100% detailed shaded uh, pencil, pencil drawing for every background. And uh, the, whole, the whole comic is kind of hued in this, um, this brown chrome kind of, uh, what was it called? Uh, I forget what the name for the name for it is, but you know, the black and white where it's slightly brown. And so it looks really cool. It looks like it's from the 1920s. And it's, uh, it's really awesome. All the characters are interesting. They all have unique faces, unique personalities. They all have unique ways of talking. She has like, at least like 50 characters or something in this comic. And they all talk differently. They all have different modes of speech, and they all and and she's able to, to to just like illustrate that through the words that she uses very well. And uh, yeah, I just like it. I like it. The the one thing that's wrong with it, I would say, is that it's a very very slow release date. Like it started in two thousand six, and there's only been like a, a hundred pages since then. That's like twelve years, a hundred pages or so. That's not that's not that high of a account. But uh, apparently she has this, the entire story already set up in her head. She knows what's going to happen. But it just takes forever for her to actually draw all of these perfectly shaded, perfectly uh, hued, perfectly uh, composed images. So it's, that's the one thing that's bad about it. But if you're new to it and you start reading it right now at the beginning, you can get like a whole lot of story. It's like she's, she's drawn a whole lot of... It's like uh, I think she's three chapters in or she's at chapter three right now so uh, yeah if you want to go check out this comic please do so it's really cool uh, i have nothing else to say about that do i no i don't it's only been four minutes i'm so depressed i can't think of anything else to talk about i don't want to think of anything else to talk about but i'm gonna do this i'm gonna make these podcast recordings whether i like it or not because I think that it's best to do something whether you like it or not. That's the only way to get through it, and that's the only way to get yourself to be creative if you're not creative. If you're out of a creative, like you're in an uncreative rut. The only way to break out of it is to do it. Just do it. So what else can I talk about? Um, let me see. There's 
see, let me see, let me see. Anything, I'm just looking around the room to try and find something to talk about. Um, shoot, okay, I'll talk about something very mundane, but it's there. Uh, the light in this room does not work because the bulb has gone out. And <laughs> for some reason, this house has those stupid bulbs that you can't get anywhere. Those, like, those bulbs you have to plug into it, like push in. They're not the twist-on bulbs. And so we, uh, like, we haven't replaced it at all. It, it has not been replaced. So this room would be completely dark if not, for the f if not for the one little tiny desk lamp that I have. And that's where I get my light from. And sometimes, like, it, it's surprising. When I get home from work and it's dark, I have to walk into a dark room... And, you know, when you normally, when you walk into a dark room, you can turn on the light right at the wall, but the lamp is all the way over at the other end of the room, so I have to walk through the darkness. Oh my god, this is the most, this is the most, <laughs> this is the lamest, 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 lamest thing to talk about ever. I've never talked about something so stupid and mundane, but I guess that's what I gotta do. I gotta talk about the mundane, talk about the everything. Um, there is also, I have, okay... Another mundane thing. I'm going to talk about this is the mundane episode or the mundane session of this podcast. So I have this case, this uh, tin that has green tea in it that my aunt Christine gave to me uh, for my birthday. And I think she gave it to me two years ago. And I think I've used this green tea once. Like it comes with this metal thing, this metal cage thing that you put the tea into and then you dip the tea into. But I have used this Maybe once, maybe twice at most, I have used this tea. And I don't even know if it's still good, right? I don't know how long tea is supposed to last. Probably longer than two years, but it still smells good. But <laughs> like, I don't know why. I don't know why I haven't used it. I mean, I like green tea. I just never think about using it because it's on my desk. It's not when I go into the kitchen to get something, that's when I look for food or that's when I look for something that I can make. Like, I've made more tea from the random boxes of standard tea that we have in the kitchen than from this green tea thing. So maybe I should move it to the kitchen. But I don't want to do it because it's mine. I don't want people using it. And I know people will use it if it's in the kitchen. Maybe they won't. I don't know. I just uh, I just don't want to move. I don't want to change. For some reason, I don't want to change, and I, I need to. And it, it's confusing and messy, and I don't like change, but whatever. Whatever. I can't think. Can't think of anything. Uh, let's see. Anything else that's mundane? Uh, I have a, um, uh, a cup that I got for my birthday, I think, this year. A My Little Pony Friendship is Magic cup. It has Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie on it. I haven't used it for anything, really. I guess I've drunk water out of it once. Uh, what else do I got? I got, like, a shaving kit that I have not used because I, I don't use hand... Sh I, I use electric shavers, but... Uh, my cousin Renee got me that, and I have that, but I don't use it. I have a keyboard, and uh, the reason I got this keyboard, like I have a laptop, the laptop has a built-in keyboard, but the reason I got this keyboard, it's over here, is because I wanted to one day, you know, sometime in the future, I wanted to learn Dwarf Fortress, learn how to play Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress, if you don't know, is a game that is, like, entirely... I don't know how to phrase it. It's like entirely procedurally gener generated. So you're kind of in charge of these dwarves and you have a mine and basically you just give them commands and they do things. But what's very uh, cool about Dwarf Fortress is that these every single person has a different personality and they are, they're all completely random. Every single person has a different personality and they, so they can get into fights, they can die. You can... Um, you can dig and dig and dig and dig and eventually go, go down to hell, I think. That's what happened to someone. Like, this is a program that was designed to be as, um, like, have as much emergent gameplay as possible. So it's basically, whereas most games, you know, they have, like, a specific thing that the, uh, that the creator wants you to do. There are other games that are like Minecraft. Minecraft is a game that you can do multiple things with, and many people have done many different things with. And that's kind of what Dwarf Fortress is like. <laughs> it's kind of what Dwarf... I can't speak. It's kind of what Dwarf Fortress is like. It's, uh... You can do, like, as... So many different things in it. <laughs> and it's... And the the characters and the... They all react and the world changes. And it, it just... 
everything gets affected. The environment, the, like, I don't know. I don't even know. I just know that it's a really cool game. But what makes it really hard to play is that the, you have to, in order to be able to play the game, you have to know, like, the entry level to playing the game is really hard. You've got to learn a lot of different keyboard shortcuts in order to play this game. And you need so many that the standard keyboard that the laptop has does not have enough keys. It doesn't have the right numpad, and it doesn't have the right, you know, the home keys. It doesn't have all the keys. And so uh, I, I bought a keyboard in order to be able to play Dwarf Fortress and learn it. Because I think, you know, learning how to play Dwarf Fortress, if you can learn to play Dwarf Fortress, you could probably learn how to play any game, you know? It's a useful kind of tool, cool, cool tool. Eventually, I wanted to actually make a YouTube series where I was playing uh, Dwarf Fortress and making it exactly, like, perfectly clear what was going on, you know, with perfect enunciation, so that anyone could watch it without having to understand how Dwarf Fortress works. Do not know how I would do that, but I think that that would be a really cool series. But anyways, that's all I gotta say.